Hello everyone, welcome to Facts Learning. Today we are going to be doing trade unions, economic management sciences, grade 9 work. Firstly, we're going to have our first prayer. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we ask for forgiveness. Lord, we also ask that you may help us to understand all the concepts that we'll be learning today. May we not forget it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Firstly, we will need to know what is a trade union. A trade union is an organized association of workers in a trade, a group of trades, or a profession, and it is formed to protect and further the rights and also the interests of workers. So a trade union is an organized association of workers in a trade, a group of trades, or a profession, and it is formed to protect and further the rights and also further the interests of workers. What is a trade? A trade is a, is a business of a particular kind or a job requiring special skills and training. A trade is a business of a particular kind or a job requiring special skills and training. People who have studied in a university or technicon and have acquired a diploma or a degree are said to work in a profession. That means, for example, you as a person, you went to university and or a technicon, a university or a technicon, then you, you studied and then you got a degree or a diploma and you are working according to that uh, what you've gotten. For example, if you studied to be a lawyer, you've gotten, you studied in a university and you got a degree or a diploma. Then uh, once you, uh, you've gotten that degree, when you start working, you are said to work in a profession. Trade unions talk to their employers about the needs of their members. Trade unions talk to employers about the needs of their members. If you belong to a trade union, you would be an organized worker. So an organized worker is somebody who belongs, is a worker who belongs to a trade union. For example, you are in your school. You, you have started a trade union. Now the rest of the school has joined your trade union. Your teachers are your employers. All the learners in your school have joined your trade union but your teachers are your employers, are the learners' employers. Now, those people that have joined your trade union are said to be organized workers. I hope you understand. The people that have joined your trade union are said to be organized workers. Why? Because they now belong to a trade. Now, you as a trade union, you talk to the teachers. You talk to the teachers. I said the teachers are your employers. You talk to the teachers about the needs of your members inside your trade union. Now, you're talking to the teachers about the needs of the learners. The learners are people in your trade union. They are the workers in your trade union, while the teachers are their employers. And you are talking for, you, for them. I hope you understand. A, tr a trade union is controlled run and paid for by its members. So it means all the people that are in your trade union, they control it, they run it, and they pay for it. They are organizations of workers that protect the rights and promote the interest of, the, of their members. So you as a trade union, you protect the rights and you promote the interest of the, your members inside your trade union. In South Africa, there are trade unions for general workers, tradesmen, blue-collar workers, and white-collar workers. General workers include skilled and unskilled employees in a range of industries. Tradesmen include employees with particular skills such as bricklaying. Blue-collar workers are skilled and unskilled workers in particular industries, while white-collar workers are professionals such as your teachers, your doctors. Those are white-collar workers. Blue-collar workers are people who usually work outside or inside a factory and use mostly their hands and physical labor in jobs. For example, building a house. If somebody is building their, a house with their hands, 
then you are using obviously it's a physical labor because you are using your hands to build the house white collar workers are people who usually work in offices and use their minds more than physical labor white collar workers are people who usually work in offices and use their minds their minds more than physical labor that means they use their brains like doctors they use their brains more than their hands teachers they use their brains more than their hands trade unions are protected by labor legislation through the labor relations act and the constitution of south africa so me as a or you as a trade union if you i for, referring to the example i gave at first you as a trade union you are protected by the labor legislations and you are also protected by the constitution of south africa you are protected by the labor Leg relations act and the constitution of south africa let's now look at the brief historical development of trade unions cheap labor helped to build south africa during the apartheid years cheap labor is like for example you are you are cleaning the whole of uh, south africa or maybe you are cleaning the white house you know the how big the white house is then after cleaning it every day you clean the whole of the white house and then you get paid 1 rand or maybe 10 rand it does not make sense that is cheap labor the government took away black south africans freedom to work and live where they wanted to so the apartheid government took away black workers freedom to live and work where they wanted to that means you as a black worker you could not choose where you wanted to live you could not choose where you wanted to work it was the the apartheid government that would choose for you black south africans became guests in their own country because of the system of black homelands the bantu stands or black homelands established by the apartheid government were areas to which the majority of black population was moved to prevent them from living in the urban areas of south africa if you work outside of the homelands you were regarded as a migrant laborer a migrant laborer migrant laborers are people who leave their country to go and work for another country so if you live for example you are living in america but then you your job is in canada you leave america to go and work in canada you are a migrant laborer because you have left your country to go and work for another country black workers were poorly paid and overworked here in south africa during the apartheid years black workers were poorly paid and overworked black workers fought for the end of apartheid and better working conditions they fought for apartheid and better working conditions the trade union movement helped to change apartheid laws and to bring about freedom for black south Af freedom that black south africans enjoy today the trade union movement help to change apartheid laws and bring about freedom and the new rights that black south africans enjoy today one of the most important rights was the right to take industrial action and a strike and to take strikes industrial action is action that workers take to protest against their employers industrial action is action that workers take to protest against their employers a strike is a a strike is to stop working to force employers to improve your wages or working conditions a strike is to stop working to force employers to improve your wages or working conditions that means you stopped working now you have, now because the uh, employers need you they will, they will be forced to improve your wages or your working conditions trade unions help to end apartheid that is how powerful trade unions are they help to end apartheid the first trade unions 
such as the South African Confederation of Labour, abbreviated, I call it the circle. That helps me remember its uh, acronym. So now, if I if I say circle, then I know the spelling is S A C O L, then I know that it's the South African Confederation of Labour, and. The South African Confederation of Labour was founded in 1956, and these were for white people only. It was for white people only. SACOL was a right-wing organization that fought for jobs to be reserved for white people. SACOL, or the South African Confederation of Labour, was a right-wing organization that fought for jobs to be reserved for white people. Trade unions for black workers began to be founded in 1917. At this time, it was illegal because at, uh, at this time, uh, the apartheid government did not allow black trade unions to, be, uh, to exist. It was against the law. An example of, of this is Industrial and Commercial Workers Union. The Industrial and Commercial Workers Union. This was founded in 1917 and was once the largest, the largest trade union in Africa. That is how big it was. It was once the largest trade union in Africa. Let us now look at some milestones in the historical development of trade unions. We're going to use it with the timeline. As you can see on your left hand side of your video, it's showing an arrow. That is our timeline. I couldn't do it. You, will, you know what I mean. In the 1930s, all trade unions in South Africa merged together to form the South African Trade and Labor Council, the SATLC. All trade unions in South Africa merged together or joined together to form the South African Trade and, trade and Labor Council. This was a single multiracial trade union. That means it was for both blacks, whites, Indians, colors. It was for all of them. They could all join. In, that was in, 1930, in the 1930s. In 1954, whites split up the SATLC, which was the South African Trade and, and Labor Council. Whites split it up to form the TAFSA. The TAFSA stands for the Trade and Union Council of South Africa. The Trade and Union Council of South Africa. I would advise you to take notes because you will forget these abbreviations I'm giving to you. Because sometimes in your exam, your teacher might put it as SATLC, now write uh, what it fully means. That will only be if they want to help you at least get one or two marks. So now the TUCSA stands for the Trade and Union Council of South Africa. So that means um, in 1954, White split up the South African Trade and Labor Council to form the Trade and Union Council of sorry they, to form the Trade and Union Council of South Africa. The Trade and Union Council of South Africa only allowed white people, colored people, and Indian people. When I say people, I mean workers. Only workers can join trade unions. So the Trade and the Trade and Union Council of South Africa only allowed white, colored, and Indian workers to be their members. Then in 1955, the South African Council of Trade Unions, the SACTU, is formed. In 1955, the South African Council of Trade Unions was formed. This is a non-racial trade union coordinating council which played a, a, a big role in the struggle of movement. It played a large role in the struggle of labor movements. In 1977, the apartheid government realized that they needed to control black workers more tightly, so they looked into legalizing black trade unions. In 1977, the apartheid government 
realized that they needed to control black workers more tightly, so they looked into legalizing black trade unions. In 1979, black trade unions were legalized, and the Federation of South African Trade Unions was formed. The FOSATU, F-O-S-A-T-U, was formed. The Federation of South African Trade Unions was formed in 1979, and that was when black trade unions were legalized. In the 1980s, businesses were forced to negotiate with black workers about strikes and industrial action. In the 1980s, businesses were forced to negotiate with black workers about strikes and industrial actions. In 1982, the National Union of Mine Workers was formed, which is in abbreviation is NUM. The National Union of Mine Workers was formed. In 1985, the Congress of South African Trade Union was formed, the COSATU. So now when the COSATU was formed, the, Con the Congress of South African Trade Union, when it was formed, it merged, merges to join together. It joined together with FOSATU, FOSATU, F-O-S-U-T, F-O-S-A-T-U, sorry. Now the FOSATU, I told you, it stands for the Federation of South African Trade Union. Now the the Federation of South African Trade Union joined with the Congress of South African Trade Unions to form one. Then in 1990, SACTU, the South African Council of Trade Unions, is dissolved and encourages all its members to join the Congress of South African Trade Union. In 1994, we had our first democratic elect elections in South Africa, and then in 1996, the new constitution passed new laws that allowed workers, that gave workers the right to join trade unions. And we are done with our timeline. Trade unions were a strong force. I told you trade unions were very powerful. They were, they were, the, they were a strong force that helped to bring about political change. For example, in the 1950s and the 1960s, South to the South African Council of Trade Unions demanded a minimum of one euro per day. Today, the government sets minimum wages for workers in different industries. In the 1980s, we are going back to the 1980s. In the 1980s, the Congress of South African Trade Union organized mass strikes against new labor laws. So around the 1980s, there were new labor laws uh, that were created by the apartheid government. Now, the Congress of South African Trade Union organized mass strikes against those new labor laws. The trade union, together with community organizations, arranged many stairways through which people demanded political change. So, at this time, they arranged many stairways. They stayed away from work where they demanded political change. Many trade union leaders became well-known members of the ANC after the 1994 elections. So even if you didn't know them, the leaders, but then after the election, they became well-known members of the ANC after the 1994 elections. After the 1994 elections, the new government passed on new labor laws to protect workers. They passed on new labor laws to do what? To protect labor workers. Employers today, they realize that they need to work with their employees and make decisions together. This improves productivity in the workplace. This improves productivity in the workplace. Employers today realize that they need to work with employees and make decisions together. Them working together, employers and employees or bosses and workers working together uh, make improves productivity in the workplace. Now that workers take 
there are disagreements with employers to the CCMA, the Commission, the Commission of Conciliation, Meditation and Arbitration. Now that workers take their, their disagreements with employers there, illegal strikes happen less often. This saves the economy lots of money. The roles and responsibilities of trade unions in South Africa. When trade union, when workers feel that their employers are not listening to them, when workers feel that their bosses are not listening to, listening to them, their trade union can organize can organize industrial actions. Let's go back to our example. You, as the learners, you are unhappy with the teachers. The teachers, we remember, we said the teachers are your employers, and you are the workers, and you, uh, the learners in your school are the workers, and you, yourself, are a trade union. Now, you as a trade union, you, your workers tell you that we feel that the teachers are not listening to us. You as a trade union, you are going to organize industrial actions. Remember, we told you that an industrial action is an action that workers take to protect is action that workers take to protest against employers. So these industrial actions have an influence on labor relations. Labor relations is how employers and employees communicate or relate with each other. Labor relations, yeah, I already said that labor relations is a way that employers and employees relate to each other. So now they... These industrial actions they affect the way how you as how those learners uh, relate with teachers, their employers. Trade unions can organize the following: number one, workers can stop working and strike. Number two, workers can stop working overtime. Overtime is to work more than the time you are supposed to, or they can work less overtime. You know. It's just less. You're not working uh, the full amount of overtime that you will normally do. Workers can advertise their prob workers can advertise their problems through posters or protests. Workers can advertise their problems through posters or protests. Workers can stand outside a workplace and prevent people from entering or leaving that workplace. In short, we we say that workers can picket. Employers can also take industrial action and shut employees out of the business or factory. So it's not only trade unions that can uh, that can do industrial actions. Also, employers can do industrial actions. An unprotected strike is when workers stop working, even though the law of the country or an agreement with employers says they may not strike. An unprotected strike is when workers stop working and strike, even though the law says they are not allowed to strike, or an agreement that they had with their, their employer says they are not allowed to strike. In South Africa, certain workers are not allowed to strike. For example, your police or your medical services. Why, do, why are they not allowed to strike? It's because they are essential services and they are needed 24-7. If you don't know what 24-7 means, they are needed every day, every hour. Essential services are important services in a country that if the services were stopped or limited, people's lives would be at risk. Essential services are important services in a country that if these services were stopped or limited, people's lives would be at risk. Trade unions also have a role in looking after the welfare, the well-being. Sorry, trade unions also have a role in looking after the well-being of its workers and shaping the politics of the country. Trade unions teach workers about their rights as well as issues such as HIV and AIDS, and also teaching teach about how to manage their money. They, they also use their power to put pressure on the government through industrial action when the price of essential goods go up. Remember, I'm telling you for the third time now, trade unions were 
are very powerful. Now they use that power that they have to put pressure on the government through industrial action when the prices of essential goods go up. This protects the workers from exploitation by the government. Trade unions also negotiate with employers through collective bargaining to improve their members' wages, benefits, and working conditions to manage retrenchments. Collective bargaining is when trade unions negotiate about workers' rights and employers. Collective bargaining is when trade unions negotiate to workers negotiate with workers about workers' rights. Retrenchment is when employees are let go because of the because the business can no longer employ them. Work to pass so trade unions also work to pass laws that will improve their members' lives. They also provide professional training, legal advice and legal representation for their members. Trade unions also organize industrial actions. Trade unions also represent workers during disputes with employers. Trade unions also work with employers to get employees a greater say in the decisions that management makes. Responsibilities of a trade union. Trade unions must negotiate with employers. They must negotiate with employers to improve their, their members' working conditions. They must also try to attract new members, but they must not force anyone to join the trade union. You are not allowed, as a trade union, you are not allowed to force anyone to join your trade union, but you can attract people to join your trade union. Trade unions must make decisions based on secret votes by all members in that trade union. Trade unions must ensure that all industrial actions are lawful and peaceful. Trade unions must also make reasonable demands on the employer. Trade unions must help to settle disputes between employers and employees. Trade unions must help to bring about a peaceful workplace. The effects of trade unions on businesses Again, I'm telling you, trade unions are very powerful. Now we're going to see how their, their effect on businesses. Trade unions have a lot of power. I told you, this is the fifth time I've been counting it. Trade unions have a lot of power. They have the potential. They have the potential to have, to, to have great effect on businesses. To know what these effects are, businesses have to be familiar with the Labor Relations Act and the Constitution of South Africa. This legislation gives workers and trade unions the right to form and join and take part in a trade union. This legislation gives workers and trade unions the right to form, join and take part in a trade union. It gives workers and trade unions the right to settle disagreements with their employers through an independent third party, which is the CCMA. Here in South Africa is the CCMA. CCMA stands for the Commission of Conciliation, Meditation and Arbitration. And it is an independent group of people from the government, organized businesses and organized labor. The legislation also gives workers and trade unions the right to be at the workplace for union re uh, reasons, elect trade unions, tr elect trade union representatives in the workplace, and also take time off, take time off for union activities. The legislation also gives workers and trade unions the right to access information for collective bargaining pro purposes. I told you what a, a collective bargaining purposes is. If you don't remember, go, go back in the video and check. It also gives uh, workers and trade unions the right to strike. But not all strikes are protected by this act. Remember we said that um, in the previous slide, we said that workers, essential workers are not allowed to strike. Why? Because 
those services are needed all the time. These trade unions, these trade union rights help to guide businesses and employees in labor relations. The Labor Relations Act in South Africa is consistent with the International Labor Organization, the ILO. These are the international laws. Businesses need to ensure that they can accommodate trade unions. So they need to know about collective bargaining, workplace forums. Workplace for forums, these are employees forums that give employees a say about how the business is run. Industrial action and also disciplinary action. Those are the four that businesses need to know about. They need to know about collective bargaining, workplace forums, industrial action and disciplinary action. Disciplinary action is an action for punishing and it includes disputes and dismissals. Trade unions ensure that businesses don't make decisions that are unilateral. This means one-sided. Unilateral means one-sided. Uni means one. They ensure that workers are consulted and workers are involved in the decisions that employers make. Now it is no more unilateral. Once both the employers and employees are involved in a decision, it's no more unilateral, but now it is bilateral, which means it is two-sided. If businesses don't comply with the Labor Relations Act, then workers can take them to labor court. Contributions of trade unions to sustainable growth and development. Trade unions make for an educated workforce that is respected and encouraged to improve its skills. They ensure healthy dialogues between workers and employers in an environment where the, the rights of employers and employees are protected by law. Let us look at our example that I gave at first. I said you are the trade union, the learners in your school are the workers, and your teachers are your employers. You as that as the trade union, you should ensure a healthy di dialogue between the learners and the teachers. Inside an environment, that means when in, the, in those dialogues, the dialogue should be in an environment where the rights of employers, the rights of your teachers, and the rights of the learners, your workers, are protected by law. By protecting the, the rights of employers and employees, trade unions contribute to sustainable growth and development. By protecting the rights of employers and employees, trade unions contribute to sustainable growth and development. A business that exploits its workers is not growing sustainably. The, to exploit is to treat a person to gain advantage for, for yourself. To exploit is to treat a person badly to gain advantage for yourself. A business that respects its workers and develops its workers' skills is creating a climate for sustainable growth and development. A business that respects its workers and develops its workers' skills is creating a climate for sustainable growth and development. Thank you for watching. Consider subscribing to the video to the channel and like this video if it helps you. Remember you are the king or queen in your kingdom. Now go and rule.